friends and the vegan with a cat is there. Today I will make a hazelnut look for you, a filbert look. Uh, one of my favorite nut looks, I have to admit, because maybe it's because I was in the garden of my grandmother who had uh, filbert trees and I always liked them fresh. And if you soak them, like I did here, overnight, I'll show you what that looks like. I might soaked filberts. See? Takes one night. Then they are returned to their fresh state. They are as crunchy and fresh like fresh hazelnuts after the soaking for one night. And then they are more easily digestible and they make a wonderful, delicious nut milk. So I'll show you now how I wash them. It's easy, but yeah, why not? So, this is my sink, and this is my sieve, and these are my cows and hazelnuts. See the, the reddish liquid? Have you seen the water that came out of the hazelnuts? hazelnuts? Yeah, I wash it. Just down the way. Drain a little bit, they are sit for a while, and wash them in a little container where they have been soaked. So I go back to make it easy and workable. There we go. In my filberts, my blender, I drained them, I washed them. And now with the hazel, with the hazelnuts, the water of course. I take usually a um, double quantity. Depends on how thick you want, how rich you want your milk. And I take some um, some grains of salt, just some grains. Just some grains. Ten grains. Ten crystals. Okay. That's the first part of it. One, two, three. you want to keep it for a while, but you have to bring it out all, I mean most of it. And the more you, you squeeze it, the longer you take, the more of the milk comes out of the nut flour, the better a nut flour you will obtain. Because with this nut flour we can make the most delicious and super healthy cakes. 
We won't use the flower. Our grannies did. Oh, they were famous for it. World now. World now. My granny had eight sisters. They were all in the bakery family. All the sisters were bakers. Can you imagine? What happened on the birthday parties? Several birthday parties. <laughs> there was a mandatory to eat for every guest who was invited. Mandatory to eat at least three big pieces of cake. And my granny says big, then it is, is big. Large, you know. So I know something about cakes. I mean to eat them. <laughs> now, I make my own cakes, my food cakes, for example, with that flour. I quickly show you how the nut flour, what the nut flour looks like. See, I take some time for it to squeeze the milk out of the nut flour. So I open my bag, and you see what happens. What happened to that? To these horse hazelnuts, the filberts. I will show you. See how dry that is now after pressing them out. See. Pretty much pretty right. Nice. It's a very nice nut flour. And I store it in my fridge, in my freezer, in a container, and I collect all the nut flour over the weeks from all the nut milk I make. And then I have a, a huge amount and then I can make a wonderful cake. Because you need for, for a good cake you need a lot. So this is my nut milk. First I pour it into a smaller container, because then I can refill it into a glass bottle. And I like my glass bottles, because the plastic is not that good, you know. And I have these little guys here around. So that's needed. I like this high hazelnut flour a lot because it really tastes amazing. It is different from almond milk and others. It has a really own character, that's all. Character on its own. This is it. And I can put this in my fridge. We'll keep for some days. And if I keep it longer, I will make kaffir, kefir out of it. It goes all on its own. It will ferment. The bacteria in here will transform it to a wonderful sour milk product. You can yogurt, kefir, and later even cheese. If I want to make cheese, I don't, I don't even need to, to bring the flour out. I can use the milk with the flour and make the most delicious cheeses. I will tell you later about that. And now, for now, I say hello and goodbye, little hazelnut milk. Mm, yummy!